title of the lesson tonight is Live Life to the Fullest. Are you really living life or are you like so many people in the world today that sort of just drift along with the tide day after day and uh, not enjoying your life and not enjoying the direction that you're going? I believe that we have to have a purpose. We have to be driven by a purpose to live the fullest life that we can. Uh, I really do believe that God offers us the fullest and the richest life that we could ever have in this world. If we'll understand what he offers us and understand the life that he wants us to have, that we can live our life with a purpose and live it to the fullest and be happy and be joyful. <clears throat> I know that... The Lord's way is revealed to us in the inspired Word of God. Uh, I also know that a lot of people have and do continue to misquote, misuse, and, and use the Word of God in, in every possible conceivable way to uh, make different points and, and to uh, try to make it fit their life. But uh, in order for us to live life to the fullest, we have to be obedient to it in the way it's written and in the way that God intended us to have it. Um, in the one chapter book of Jude, we're, we're told that God's way was revealed to us in the Bible, and it says, once for all. So our all-knowing God, who knew everything, created everything, give us all that we needed to live our life to the fullest one time. It'll not be improved on. It won't be changed. It, it, he gave it to us, and we need to be very careful uh, in life not to accept any shortcuts. And there's a lot of shortcuts that are offered. Uh, turn the TV on on Sunday morning. Uh, there's a number of shortcuts that people offer. Uh, and in that, I mean an easy way of salvation, an easy way of life. Uh, they want to give you peace of mind uh, by doing nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, it's a false hope. It's a false way of life. Uh, but it seems to be the American way. It seems to be the way that a lot of people are traveling, to take the easy road and not have to do anything. You know, I'm, I'm happy with that. I, I don't, you know, people say and use all sorts of excuses, but we can't take the easy road just because someone says it's the easier way or the best way. Uh, I'll tell you something else about the American fashion. It isn't politically correct uh, in this country to talk about one way or only one way about anything. So when we talk about God's way is the only way, there's not a lot of people that want to get right down and, and, and agree with that. People say, oh no, I'm I beg to differ with you. You know, the Scripture says this, the Scripture says that, and they want to tear it apart and try to make it something that it's not. Uh, people don't want to have anything to do with one way. God's way is one way, but God's our Creator. He's a great and wonderful God. He's given us all that we need, uh, especially when it comes to our spiritual being and well-being. Uh, He's given us everything. John 14 and, and verse 6 uh, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, if you've got a red letter edition in your New Testament, this is the words of Christ. He's saying, nobody comes to the Father but by me. Uh, is that one way? Yeah, it is. It's one way. You can't go to God any other way than going through the Son. Uh, it's one way, but people try to bypass that. There's no substitute uh, if we want to be with God in heaven to get there any other way than through and by the Son of God. Ephesians 5, beginning with verse 15, says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. In order for us to get the most out of life, in order for us to live life to the fullest, we have to understand what the will of God is and where we need to be. Uh, you know, 
there's a lot of people that don't care about their purpose in life, don't care one way or other what God wants them to do. They're just happy uh, strolling along like a leisurely stroll and not caring about anything. Uh, it, it's really a pretty sad story, but very true still. And it's much too often repeated in the lives of many, many people that you look at. Sometimes people appear to be happy, but you know, we can't see inside of people uh, and can't tell the hearts of people, but there are so many unhappy people in the world today. There's millions and millions of people that are not happy with their life. Uh, many are, are really not living life. They're just coasting along, drifting along. They could be enjoying life. They could be living life to the fullest. They could have that wonderful home, uh, eternal home with God, uh, in their horizon but many people are not willing uh, to go that way how can a person know when they have uh, arrived somewhere if they don't even know where they're going you know if you don't have a purpose you don't know where you're going uh, you know I, I dare say you don't walk out of the house one day unannounced and, and get in the car and start to the store and then decide, hey, I'm just going to take a vacation. Don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to go. How are you going to know when you get there if you don't know where you're going? Uh, you know, people live life in that very way. What would be the point of, of a game if you didn't have the goalpost? What would be the point of having a football game if there was no goalpost? How would you score? Uh, God had a plan for your life. God had a plan for my life. He's got a plan for everyone's life who will be obedient to His will. He does. Uh, and He had that plan long before we were born. Uh, we just have to consent to it. Uh, he's not going to make us do anything. We're not predestined to do anything. It's of our own free will and our own choosing. But God has a plan for each one of us if we're just willing to be obedient to God and, and let Him work in our life. Uh, and it's far more. His plan for us is far more than just pleasure. It's far more than just uh, accumulation of wealth. It's far more than, uh, than health. You know, we can't derive at any moment when our health is going to fail. Uh, it does, has nothing to do with health, has nothing to do with wealth, has nothing to do with pleasure, what you may want to do. Uh, it's about being obedient to God. Uh, he made us here and He put us here. I read an article the other day titled Living a Life That Matters and it was written by a Jewish rabbi. And in this book, uh, he wrote it of his experience dealing with people over 40 years. And his, he indicated that most people were not afraid of dying, that he had talked to in, in this article, but the ones who had the most trouble with death felt that they had not done anything worthwhile in their lives. In other words, they didn't know what their purpose was and they hadn't accomplished anything. You know. A lot of people can't accomplish anything if you don't have a purpose. You have to have a purpose. Uh, it wasn't the act of death that, that frightened them as much as it was insignificance, not knowing their purpose and not accomplishing anything. They weren't afraid of dying. They just were afraid to leave without accomplishing anything. And that's the point of being a Christian. We're accomplishing much for God when we're a Christian. Our purpose is directed uh, in the way that God would have us to live. I got from that little story that I read that he was talking about people who felt they hadn't achieved greatness as the world thinks about greatness because people uh, didn't want to die without leaving their mark, so to say, but rather was, was talking about vast numbers of people who had just drifted alone in life and never really realized what they were here for. Uh, it's sad that so many people don't know uh, and have a purpose in life, that they just live day to day and have no idea where their life's going or what direction they need to take. Uh, 
Maybe they've enjoyed parts of their life and maybe even had prosperity and pleasure at times, but they failed to realize what, what God had brought them uh, into the world to do and to have and to be a part of. God wants us to be a part of His kingdom. He wants us to be a part of His work here on this earth. Our purpose is to be His children and to be the best Christian that we can. Uh, Life didn't pass those folks by that seemed to not know where they were going. Uh, they just missed it. We have a mind to choose. And you can miss it uh, if you don't choose and make the right decisions. They just missed it. Uh, I read a quote the other day, uh, and I'd like to share it with you. And it goes, there are few people in the world uh, who strain every muscle in their bodies to make things happen. And others of us watch what happens. But the most of us just ask what happened uh, it just is an indication that you know most people are just along for the ride you know they don't have a purpose in life and really don't see uh, a lot of what's going on uh, while there's a certain amount of humor in that sometimes it drives home the truth that many people just don't hear when especially when it comes to to religion spiritual issues they just don't hear because they don't read and study the, uh, the Bible uh, wouldn't it be easier and better for us uh, sometimes have you lived your life for so many years and you say well you know if I had this to do over again I'd do it a little bit different uh, or I wished I'd have known then what I know now and my decisions might be a little different but you know we can't go back and we can't do that thing so wouldn't we rather live life to the fullest today and make the best decisions we can rather than just drift along and make decisions that we really uh, may harm us spiritually along the way. Uh, one day, this earthly life is going to be over for all of us. It really is. Uh, and we don't like to think about it. We don't like to talk about it. Uh, I don't want to face death and have just drifted along in my life. Uh, when death comes, and I know it will, as sure as I'm standing here, death will come to me. And I don't want to face God and then look at Him on Judgment Day and, and say, well, Lord, I, I'm sorry, I just drifted along with no purpose. Uh, I want to hear God say, enter in thou faithful servant. I want Him to know that I realize that I have a purpose and that I'm working towards that purpose and that I'm living my life to the very fullest that I can in being a Christian. And in doing that, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be happy in the life that, that I've chosen to live for God. Uh, Solomon was a third king of Israel. He was a king who brought the nation of Israel to the, the height of his glory. I mean, it, it came to be the uh, single most power in that day. Uh, somewhat like America today. You know, we're, we're one of the top powers in this world today. But Solomon is said to have been the wisest man who ever lived on the face of the earth at, at that time. Uh, he was chosen and inspired of God to write several books of the Old Testament. Ecclesiastes was one of those books, and, and in it he wrote of his search for the meaning of life. And if you've read it, you know what his conclusion was. Uh, as he looked around at, at all the things in life, uh, he said, it's all vanity. It's all vanity. And the people that live in this life, that have no purpose, that just drift around, it's just for vanity. It's all vanity. It's said to be the theme of the book of, e of Ecclesiastes. It shows the emptiness of a life without God. If we look around the world today, can we see the emptiness in lives of people in the world today without God? Certainly. Look at all the crime. Look at all the things that are going on. These folks surely have empty lives because they're not living for God. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and, and verse 13 uh, says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. You know, he says, all is vanity, and he said, hear the conclusion of the matter. Hear what's important. You know, you look out in the world, and there's a world of people that live without God, uh, but what really matters is that we're to fear God, keep His commandments, and that's the duty of mankind. That is our duty. 
to God is to have that reverence of fear to him, keep his commandments, and live a life that we should be. You know, Solomon's conclusion was uh, one that we should have today. Uh, fear God, keep his commandments. It's our duty. Uh, in chapter 12, Solomon says, For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether evil or whether good. You know, we don't know the hearts of people. We, we certainly don't. And we can know them for a lifetime and not know their hearts. Uh, God knows. You can't hide anything from God. God knows every secret thing. Uh, We are to live life, but with a sense of responsibility. Now, we can have a wonderful life. Uh, the whole life of man, even our purpose of life, is to live it responsible or responsibly uh, to the commands of God. Uh, fear God, keep His commands, for this is the whole duty of man. Uh, when you see all, everything that's going on in the world, these folks don't fear God. They don't want anything to do with God. They don't even want to talk about God. Uh, I think David expressed the thought for us in a better way than I could ever express it. He said, when I consider your heavens, and he's talking to the Lord, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have made, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea. O oh Lord, how excellent is your name. We have a wonderful, great God. Uh, we need to understand what our purpose is as, as human beings and that's to be obedient to God have a reverence to him and 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 live that way we'll have a happier life uh, I believe too what Solomon is saying is is with all of that responsibility we have to be accountable God doesn't give us responsibility and then doesn't hold us or, or won't hold us unaccountable for it we have responsibility to be obedient to him and if we don't we're going to have to stand in front of him and be accountable uh, we, we will he says god will bring every work into judgment even the secret thing so we have to be accountable to god we have to be responsible uh, so the first essential to living life to the fullest is learning that you have to be a responsible child of god uh, you can't hide things. You can't do things you shouldn't. Your life is directed, uh, and then God is first in your life. You fear Him. You keep His commandments, and, and that's your duty. Uh, and your life can be wonderful. It can be happy. You know, when we talk about responsibility, uh, I think back to Adam and Eve in the garden. You know, Adam tried to deny responsibility about eating that fruit from that tree. When God asked him, what did he say? Well, Lord, it was the woman you gave me. She gave it to me. Uh, he didn't take any responsibility for it. He wanted to put the blame on someone else. As a result, he was driven with Eve out of the garden. You know, we have to be responsible. We have to be accountable. Uh, David didn't want to face the responsibility of his sin. He looked down from above, saw Bathsheba, a sent for her. Uh, had a relationship with her. She came with child, and he didn't want to accept any of that responsibility. His sin. Uh, he placed her husband, uh, Uriah, in a place where he would be killed to try to get out of that responsibility and that uh, way of being responsible for what he had done. Uh, no person can ever get the most out of life by being irresponsible. You can't. You have to be responsible up front. Uh, and that's what God demands, that we be responsible. We can have a happy life, but God says uh, we must be responsible. You simply cannot justify yourself in sin by, by any means. So we can't lie to God. He knows every secret thought. So we have to be responsible. Uh, if we lie, we only lie to ourselves because God knows. Uh, another essential to living life to the fullest is knowing that uh, there is a reason for us being here. There is a reason for us 
being here. Each and every one of us have a reason for being here. Uh, of all people, the Christian should know that there is meaning and purpose for us in this world. Uh, can you imagine, even though Christian versus non-Christian in the world today may be way lopsided there. There's a lot more non-Christian than there are Christian, but can you imagine a world where there was totally not God, there was totally not Christian, there was totally no morals at all? Well, there's a lot of people that would like to live in a world like that because they like living like that. But, you know, God doesn't like them living like that. God doesn't like us living like that. Our purpose is to spread the word. Our purpose is to help save souls. Our, our purpose is to lead people with the gospel to God. Uh, every one of us have that purpose. And we do it in a multitude of different ways. Uh, this life is, is but a, uh, a preparatory school, if you will. It's just uh, here so that we can get to the next life, get to the next. Uh, and this life, we have to do it in this life. Uh, we don't get another chance. You know, when I take my last breath, if, if I'm not ready to face God, I don't get another chance. I must make it right in this life. If I'm not right, I'm not going to be happy. I'm not going to be joyful. I'm not going to be living a life uh, that God would have me to live because I'm going to know inside that, hey, I'm only fooling myself. I can't live life to the fullest and fool myself. The only way that I can live life to the fullest and at ease is to know that I'm doing everything in my power to work and please God. And then I can live at peace. I can live life to the fullest, knowing that death is not the end of life, but rather a graduation from this earthly life into the heavenly life. Uh, that's the big thing that we as Christians look forward to. When we leave, we want to be with God. We want to be in that eternal life. However, most of today's American-style Christians dwell on the here and now. They don't focus ahead. They don't look ahead. It's all about what can I get out of life now? What can I enjoy right now? Uh, what's the least I can do and still be a Christian? Or what's the least I can do and become a Christian? Uh, this world promises a joyful life. It promises prosperity for all who will just believe in the Lord however the Bible just doesn't teach that it teaches much more than that and the truth is that God created this world and he put us here uh, he never intended for us to stay here for an eternity this is just a place for us to prosper to learn and to grow and mature but we are, we're to live life to the fullest here our real home is going to be with him this is just a temporary dwelling place uh, so that he could get us ready for and prepare us for living with him. Uh, we must pass this test or we don't get to live with it. It's just that simple. Uh, Earth is the perfect environment for that. Uh, God created it. It's the perfect place for us to live and get ready to live with him forever. God created it. He created us. Uh, can we live life to the fullest and live a godly life? Yeah, we can. We certainly can if we do it God's way. Romans 8, and verse 31 says, What shall we then say to these things if God be with us? Who can be against us? And I, and I love that scripture. Can we live life to the fullest? Absolutely. It's God's will that we be happy and live life to the fullest. So uh, what shall we say to, to these things? If God be with us, who can be against us? You know, the word of God has survived all of these years. There's more Bibles uh, in the world today than ever before. Uh, not everybody reads it, but there's more Bibles than ever before. His Word survived. Uh, who can be for uh, against us if God be for us? If we're going to live and will live in a right way for God, God is going to prepare our place for us. He's going to protect us, and He's going to give us that home in heaven. That's how we can live life to the fullest, knowing that we have a home reserved for us. Uh, Jesus expressed in his prayer from the garden the night before his crucifixion, uh, 
not my will, but thy will be done. You know, even the Son of God was willing to commit himself to the will of God, to the Godhead, even to the point of sacrificing and death and everything that he had to go through. Uh, it's the way he wanted to be, being obedient to God. Uh, yield in obedience. For us today, we must be willing to yield to God. It doesn't mean that we have to go out and be nailed to a cross, but we have to yield to God and His obedience. Do it God's way, not some other person's way that says, hey, let me give you a shortcut. Let's bypass all of this baptism stuff. Let's bypass all of this having to, to live a good Christian life. Just believe and you'll be okay. Just do a little more good than you do bad and you'll be fine. You know, a lot of that's taught to a lot of people. And a lot of people believe that because it's easy to believe. Uh, we have to be willing to yield to God to really uh, live life to the fullest. There are some religious organizations where the top guy is expressed by his brethren as being God's right-hand man, that God speaks with him and he speaks with God. Do you think that fellow knows within his heart that his position is not equal with God or that he's not really God's right-hand man? I think he has to know. But yet, the power and the privilege that that position gives him, he's willing to ride that because of so many people in the world that look to him. But God's not going to look to him like the rest of the world looks to him. If he's disobedient to God and he's not uh, fully obedient to God, uh, it's like those folks before. They've missed life. They've missed that chance to get it right. Uh, the idea is not of working or, or earning salvation. Now, that was never the plan that God had. But through our submission to God and accepting what He has to offer as a free gift, uh, we commit ourselves to God and we live faithfully to Him uh, from our own free will. That, that's, that's where it's at. You know, the Scripture doesn't say to submit when it's convenient uh, or when it just would be to my advantage. We're to commit to God all the time, every day. Uh, not only when it's just when it's politically correct, uh, it means submit at all times, especially when it's not politically correct to do so. And today it's not really politically correct. Uh, and maybe in this area, because we're, we're in what they call the Bible Belt, and you see a lot of politicians that really politic on being a Christian and wanting to make the best laws and help the people and with Christian morals. But, you know, you get away from the Bible Belt and the politicians could care less about God, about God's values, about God's way of living. Uh, they only want to say and do what's politically correct. But we, as Christians, must be obedient to God even when it's not the popular thing to do, when it's not politically correct to do. Uh, and it means more than just a recognition uh, uh, to say, well, I know God exists and I believe that, so I must be okay. That's not going to, to be okay. It, it's not just a mere recognition. Uh, it, it means aligning oneself and your life with God to follow the purpose that God had for you. And that's to live that faithful Christian life. That's to help the kingdom of God. That's to share the gospel so that souls can be added to God's kingdom. Uh, I read a little story about a college professor who asked one question uh, at the very beginning of each of his semester classes. And he asked his class, how many here would give your life for something that was very dear to you? Uh, not even another person, but anything that was very dear to you. Uh, he said in this article that it was always about the same percentage, about 10% of the people uh, would send in that paper and answer that question, that they would uh, give their life for something that, they, uh, that was important to them. Uh, how many today would be Christians if it meant that you might be killed? 
I fear that even the number of Christians that we have today would dwindle if seriously they thought that they would have to give their life at some point for the gospel and for God. Uh, too many people are Christians for what they can get out of it, not for what they can give to God. You know, God doesn't say that we have to give our life, but, you know, we have to be uh, responsible. We have to be obedient to God. Uh, there's no doubt about it. According to God's plan, He created.